most of you will recognize this as a head of maize or Indian corn. Inside the cover is the cob, which is delicious if you boil it and eat it with butter and salt. But the cob is really a head of from four to six hundred fertilized seeds of the maize thickly grouped together. Each one of these seeds will begin to grow if it falls into a suitable patch of earth. Here is one well settled underground. The outer skin has been removed from this particular seed so that we can watch the growth of the young plant within. First the root appears and pushes downwards. And then the young shoot comes out and grows upwards. Two more roots begin to grow and with the extra strength they supply, the shoot breaks through the surface of the soil. The shoot has a point like a spear, which comes through the ground first and protects the young leaves which would bruise easily. But once clear of the soil, the leaves break through their spear-like cover and begin to grow. They unfurl upwards and soon reach a fair height. So to balance them, the root has to push deeper down into the soil. In this picture, you can see clearly the jelly covering on the root that protects the root tip from harm. If two roots want to take the same underground path, there is a struggle for the right of way, and the weaker has to choose a different route. nourishment collected by the roots goes up through the plant and gives the leaves strength to develop. They grow on alternate sides of the stem to balance one another, but they present a good deal of surface to the wind and the plant might easily get blown over. To prevent this, the first root dies away and new roots grow almost horizontally and very like an umbrella in shape. They hold the plant firmly in the earth and every maize plant has a network of roots, like this. As the leaves develop, the chance of the plant being blown over gets greater. So the maize begins to make roots above the ground level in order to anchor itself into position. These roots are called aerial roots as they grow in the air and the first ones appear when the maize is about a foot high. As the plant grows taller, it develops new aerial roots in order to get extra strength. The roots on the screen now are growing when the plant is three feet high. And in spite of the fact that full-grown maize has a large leaf surface to catch the wind, it is hardly ever blown over thanks to the support it gets from its roots, both underground and overground. Watch it now, bending backwards and forwards in the wind, but firmly anchored to the earth. When it is full grown, the maize begins to flower. It is one of the plants which have separate male and female flowers. And in this picture, the male flower is growing. It is usually called the tassel of the maize.
As it grows, it puts out a large number of anthers, and these ripen and open and drop out pollen. Here is an anther very much magnified with the pollen grains dropping out. And here is some of the pollen even more highly magnified. Pollen grains have to be kept dry and are ruined by rain or dew. So at any hint of wet weather, the anther closes and the pollen is kept safely within. In dry weather, the tassel produces quantities of pollen like clouds of dust. The dry, powdery grains are carried by the wind onto the silk or female flower which is now appearing. Each of these long threads of silk in the flower has at the end of it an ovary in which are ovules that contain the life element necessary for the production of a new plant. Each thread of silk is covered with sticky hairs which catch the grains of pollen as they are blown past by the wind. As you see, the hairs are soon covered with pollen grains which stick onto a sugar, sugar solution on the hairs. In the sugar, each grain of pollen puts out a tube that carries in it the second life element needed for the fertilization of a seed. In this diagram, you can see how the pollen tube penetrates down the silk to the ovules at the end. element from the pollen joins with that in the ovule and makes the fertilized seed that is ready to develop into a new plant. The silk which is no longer needed gradually dies away and the seeds remain on the cob where they ripen until they are ready to fall to the ground and begin the life cycle of the Indian corn all over again. Mm.